Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. So today, just like the title and thumbnail suggests, we're going to take a look at just what's going on with Bitcoin, the inflows, and why the heck the price really hasn't done too much. I know people ask that question quite a bit, but again, when in doubt, zoom out. So before we get into that little piece of information, I want to give a shout out to a friend of the show, uh, Guy, Jessica, and Nick over there at uh, Coin Bureau. Uh, they have a, uh, a additional service called Coin Bureau Club, and they have graciously allowed us to use a couple of their videos that they have behind their paywall over there at Coin Bureau Club to put that on Dan Teaches Crypto website. Now, danteachescrypto.com, there's a link in the description. You can check it out. It's a free website. It's free. It's 100% free. It'll always be free. And uh, we are starting off with their ton representation of what they took a look at as far as the deep dive into the ton coin. And if you're not familiar with Coin Bureau Club, just, you know, they do a lot of different uh, reviews of things you will never see on their YouTube channel. Some more risky stuff and quite interesting and also some traditional. Also, I like uh, when they go over their portfolio, you can see what guys invested into. And more importantly, check out what their researchers are investing into. Also exclusive deals, links in the description. So when you go to Dan Teaches Crypto, it looks like this. And you're going to sign up. It's free. All I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you for your email. I won't even spam you. I just send you things like when I update, like stuff like this. And then when you get into the members area, just go over to module four, reviews. When you click on that, there's the website or there's the uh, video itself with Guy talking about ton. And I had a couple of different things in there. But on top of that, we have we go over things like World Mobile Token, we go over Meld, go over Avalanche, and a host of different things that we've uh, taken a look at. So there is a link in the description uh, for the website. Check that out. And the reason why I specifically asked for TonCoin is because of the airdrops. I know some people don't like airdrops. Uh, they don't like free money. And uh, sometimes I get it because it's a pain. You're like, why do I got to do all this stuff and jump through all these hoops? But I will tell you that their first airdrop on TonCoin was called NotCoin, and I totally missed it. And they gave out 80 billion tokens. If you're not familiar with NotCoin, we talked about in the video, but NotCoin went up 175% in seven days. I want to say it's over 1,000% since they launched, and it's pretty big. The next airdrop they're having is one called Hamster Combat. Sounds ridiculous. It's a goofy little game, but that's what they did with NotCoin. You just click, click, click away, and then you get to level up. And I think it's, a, it's pretty interesting how they actually gain the eyeballs and the ears, and that's one of the ways... So, and again, links in the description, you can check it out, go from there. Might be something, might be another couple, whatever else in your pocket. Anyhow, let's get into the stories today. What's happening? And I have to tell you, with the spot Bitcoin ETF, I thought it would start to lose steam. And it did, but the inflows keep coming. And so far, I don't know if everybody knows this, but we're on a positive streak to over two weeks now. And we're actually at an all-time high as far as the inflows, there's a great website called heyapollo.com. I believe the link's in the description. And you can see just how much as far as like the net Bitcoin flows of the ETFs. Now, everybody talks about this, and that's great. But we talk about this, and we say, this is fantastic. And I think, yeah, 241,000 as far as inflows into the various ETFs in the U.S. We're not talking about the global ETFs, which don't really have that much volume, quite honestly. I think we're over uh, $900 billion right now. Uh, with uh, the amount that have been taken in. But if we take a look at it, it looks pretty good, right? So what the heck's going on with the price? Because in crypto, we don't get out of bed for less than 10% gains. And that's not happening. I know everybody's kind of frustrated and they're, they're thinking to themselves, man, this is kind of stuff for some of us. But the other, the other ones of us are just kind of looking at this and going, it's not that bad. So if we just take a look, and this is what, this is what Diddy from the Bitcoin family told me. He's like, rah, when you have problems, you just have to zoom out. That was a horrible impression of Diddy, but he's right. And when I took a look at it today, it seems like we've been range bound, right? 68, 69,000. We just hit a little bit of a, of a uh, cruising speed to 70, almost 71,000. So that's pretty good for today. Maybe things are shifting. But if we take a look at one month, we're like, that's not that great. We take a look and look, it's just range bound again, 61, 67. If we go over three months, same thing. We were at 72 and then we kind of bopped around. If you're a day trader or a scalper, this might be fantastic for you. But again, we need to zoom out and really take a look at it. If we just take a look at a year 
And th this is what people will, will ask you when you talk to them, like, why hasn't Bitcoin exploded? It has. But we just have a problem with zooming out. Did you know that a year ago, roughly, Bitcoin was $25,000 just a year ago? Today, it is on its way to 71, 75,000. That's a three X from where we are right now. So I know people would like this just to keep going up forever. And I get it. So would I be fantastic. Why can't people understand just how great crypto and Bitcoin actually is, but it's going to take time. And again, like I've said a thousand times before, we're in the right place at the right time. Just be patient. Things are happening. And some of the reasons why it's not happening, I must be honest with you, is regulation. Uh, in the United States, we had this problem, and the problem is called Gary Gensler. And he seems to want to really take it to crypto and digital assets, but it's not just Gary. It's congressmen and women, and it's senators. And I'm not saying that it's, it's all one side. It's both sides. Actually, that's not true. Most of it is on the Democrat side. But regardless, Brian Armstrong from Coinbase put out this great blog post today, or yesterday, actually, about how to get regulatory clarity for crypto. And I could not agree more. So let's just dive into this real quick. And he states 52 million Americans own crypto. I think right now the uh, population is 368 million in the United States. Correct me in the comments section. It's a big chunk of people. And many pro-crypto candidates on both sides of the aisle also own crypto. 20% of the US po adult population is owned crypto are young, racially diverse cut across political ideological lines. I got to tell you, when I start talking about a certain candidate versus another certain candidate, people explode. There's a lot of people on both sides that are invested into crypto and digital assets, and that's just true. But there is one demographic, the younger generation, which I think is going to have their voice heard in these next elections. And I'm not even talking about the presidential elections. I'm talking about Senate and I'm talking about Con I'm, excuse me, House of Reps. At the time of this writing, Stand with Crypto.org, this was a organization that I believe was started off by Coinbase, has amassed, amassed over 900,000 advocates nationwide, roughly a million. And this includes in battleground states. If you're not from America, here's how it works. In America, we have certain states which are really pro democratic and some states which are really pro Republican. And if you don't get those states, these are the battleground states. It really comes down to like six or seven states, but they're saying 15 here. And that's where it really comes down to as far as a presidential election. Because you know, in Texas is gonna go a certain way. Florida is gonna go a certain way. California is gonna go a certain way. That's just true. But you've got a lot of advocates for crypto and it's, it's almost a million. And crypto advocates far surpass the 2020 voting margin between presidents Biden and Trump. And I had to stop and take a break and say, is that true? But I took a look over here. In the last election in 2020, uh, actually, it states that Joe Biden had 81 million votes and Donald Trump had 74 million. Let me just do some quick math. That's like uh, 7 million or something like that. Now, of course, you're welcome to sound off in the comment section about if that is accurate or not. I love the comments. It's always fun for me. But what they're talking about here is the battleground states, 15 key battleground states. As you can see, there's a lot of red. There's a little bit of blue. Blue's Democrats, that's Biden, red's, you know, JFK. Well, actually, no, excuse me. Uh, Republicans are uh, just for Trump right now. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh, he is independent, so I can't really say that. I hope that uh, he wins, actually. But anyhow, you can see how much it is. But in the battleground states, the difference was between 33 million to 31 million. So roughly, yeah, roughly a couple million or so. So if you've got this one issue and they're not getting behind it, what Brian is saying here is that it's time to vote the bums out. How do we get clarity? Clarity from the courts, first of all, which creates new case law. And we can get it from Congress if they choose to actually act. This leads us to an important conclusion. The best way to get regulatory clarity in democratic countries is to elect pro-crypto candidates on both sides of the aisle and to vote anti-crypto candidates out of office. Now, I'm not telling you who to vote for president. I can't, I mean, this is not presidential advice on this channel. Why would I do that? Do I, do I want my channel to implode and <laughs> start talking about that? 
No, but I think we can both agree, or all of us can agree here, it's not just about the president. I think it's also about the House of Representatives and senators, right? And having said that, does anybody here is pro Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts? I'm just asking the question, because I don't know. Maybe some people love Senator Warren out there. And if you are, then you know, put that in the comment section. But if you are not, I vote you, or I urge you urgently to take a look at John Deaton. And I put out this tweet because I was asking, because Elizabeth Warren states that John Deaton is a threat to democracy. I'm thinking to myself, I just saw this guy. He's an ex-Marine officer. He was just at the uh, Honorable Altrilla Company. Uh, it was for a, re a reward ceremony. And there he is getting medals. I'm like, this guy's a patriot. What are we talking about? And I know some people will say, well, Rob, what about his views? Because I need to know about his views. If you need to know about his views, that's great. Because we did a video. I linked in the description. And these are all the views of what John Deaton believes in. So you can take a look at that as far as getting these anti-crypto people out. Maybe you don't live in Massachusetts, but you can donate. And that's what I've done so far. And I'm just bringing that to everybody's attention. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section. All the links are there. Let's move on. So, miners. I thought this is a pretty good idea. Which is with miners, especially with the having recently come on uh, April 20th, 2024, there are some mining operations that may not make it. And there's some other mining operations that want to diversify for revenue. And I think this is a really smart way to do this. Of course, Scientific signs a 12-year deal with AI firm, projects 3.5 billion total revenue. Before we get into it, there are narratives that are going to push this next bull cycle. AI is definitely going to be one of them. If it wasn't for NVIDIA and the knockouts that they're doing in ChatGPT, we probably wouldn't see it, but it's here, so we need to take advantage of it at some point. And these guys, Core Scientific, did a great job. Here's what they're doing. Core Scientific expects this agreement to generate approximately $290 million worth of average annual revenue, which is $3.5 billion over the 12-year period. Of course, scientific, how will, the question is, how, they, how are they going to do that? Because I know a lot of people will hear this and they'll think, oh, that's very easy. They just use their Bitcoin mining rigs and just have it for compute power to process AI, AI-generated, whatever else it is, and to allow itself in the landscape of artificial intelligence using Bitcoin miners. But that's not how it works. As far as I understand it, correct me in the comment section if you're a Bitcoin miner, but that is very specific to what it actually does. The Bitcoin miners very rarely can actually switch over and do things with AI for compute power. But what they're looking to do is saying like this, we're going to supply you with 200 megawatts of our infrastructure where we have everything for our Bitcoin miners. We're going to revamp its existing site to accommodate core weaves operations for AI. This and so essentially what they're doing is they're going to open it up for the space, allow them to put their GPUs in there, and they can all use that space and the electricity. They can just pretty much rent it out. And they expect to have the sites prepared for operation by the first half of 2025. And I got to tell you, for everybody that's, that goes against Bitcoin Mars and say, it uses too much electricity and stuff like that, this is something they can do. On top of that, we talked, we actually, we talked about this in the, the John Deaton video about why Bitcoin mining is important. Did you know that it's good for, as far as like cleanup? I didn't know they were doing this until I put this together. So methane is 25 times worse than the CO2 for warming. So again, if we just would stop the cows from farting, we could do this. Miners convert, convert methane into electricity. Electricity used to mine Bitcoin. Bitcoin mining is the most cost effective. And it talks about wind and solar benefits. We have uh, solar panels at our house. And when we actually produce the energy, it gets stored in the battery, but it actually depletes over time. So what they're trying to do is put Bitcoin miners next to these large uh, wind and solar plants. And anything that's actually being discharged, they can soak it up and they can actually use the electricity. So wind and solar have to occur to large amounts of energy every year. And then lastly, grid balancing. I think this is important. We do this in Texas where if the state of Texas says, look, shut down for a couple of days because we don't have enough for either it's too hot or there's a winter storm. And of course, the Bitcoin miners do it. And then when they have excess energy, OK, turn it up and you guys can mine Bitcoin. And then that goes to the state of Texas. So like to me, I'm like, I don't see what the problem is with the Bitcoin mining. I just want to bring this to everybody's attention. So if you're being asked for it, you can say that's ridiculous. This is what it is. 
And that would lead us to, when we talk about the positives, let's talk about the negatives. This scares me. And it scares me a lot, actually. Because there's an issue <sighs> with deep fakes, and not the, the, the goofy deep fakes you see with Michael Saylor, or not the goofy deep fakes that you see with Brad Garlinghouse saying, hey, if you send me uh, one Bitcoin, I'll sell you two. We all know that's ridiculous, right? But this one is some as a new wrinkle. Check this out. So OKX users, or a, a user, excuse me, claims to have lost two million in deep fake AI scam. I put this out because people are like, well, who cares? It's one guy lose, losing two million. No, 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 this is gonna affect all of us. And there's a reason why I made those rules that's sitting underneath me. It's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until I prove otherwise. 0% exchanges. You don't lose it, leave anything on exchanges. You don't use leverage. Okay, maybe two or three X. I get you in that one. Then take profits along the way. You'll be a lot, a hell of a lot happier. This is what's gonna happen. Scammers utilized AI generated video to change security settings bypassing traditional defenses and depleting funds within 24 hours. How'd they do that? This was actually quite fascinating how they did it. So the user who lost 2 million, I don't know why you keep 2 million on, a, on an exchange, but whatever, detailed that scammers had obtained all this information through Telegram. Look, scammers can get your information through anywhere. They can get it. If you've been online for more than like a day and you fill any kind of form, your data is out there, trust me. Utilizing the data, the attackers accessed his email account and initiated a password reset. I think we know how to do that. They then employed an AI-generated video to change his phone number, email address, and Google Authenticator settings. And they drained within 24 hours. How'd they do that? I'm just going to tell you how they did it. So I actually had to get back into my account on Coinbase. And they said, okay, fine. We want you to send us a video of yourself holding up a newspaper with today's date, this was like a year ago or so, and, I, and we want you to say this exact phrase, and we're going to do facial recognition technology. Sure, did it, got it, access, no big deal. So what they're doing now is they're going, well, we can just do that as a deep fake. They do a deep fake of you, however they find the information, which can mimic a person's voice, face, and gestures, and it's being used all the time. Fortune highlighted the emergence of only fake, a site capable of producing highly realistic fake IDs that can fool KYC process at exchanges like OKX. So the question I'm gonna have for you is this, why are you leaving your crypto on exchanges when they can do this? And why do you not have two-factor authentication as far as like not just your SIM card or your text message, but as far as like Google Authenticator? You can do that. I show you how to do it. There's a link in the description for Dan Teaches Crypto, which is 100% free. And if you'd like to get those off of the exchanges, which you all should be doing, you can get a tangent card. So anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And then lastly, <laughs> more bad news. Macro environment. Uh, this is from the Kobayashi letter. And it looks like uh, there was just a, um, an election for the Mexican president. And congratulations to Claudia Scheinbaum, who is the first... Mexican female president ever. And uh, I guess the market didn't like that, so it crashed at 11%. So we'll see how that uh, actually comes back out. And, but the Mexican peso lost 4.5% against the US dollar and its biggest one day drop in years. That's why I'm telling you, I think that we don't really see a lot of action until our presidential election gets over and done with. And that'll be in November. So there's that piece. Also, more bad news from the same letter. U.S. economy now has 63 banks on the brink of default, according to the FDIC. 63, over 500 billion of paper losses. That's half a trillion. Declining GDP growth with rising inflation. 50% of Americans believe we're in recession, potentially. Lowest mortgage demand in over 30 years. I find that interesting, the lowest mortgage demand in over 30 years. I don't know if it's a, actually, no, I can't understand that now because if you've ever been out there for real estate and have put in bids for real estate like we have, you're going to get trumped. Uh -huh. You're going to get over, overbid 
by somebody, some mythical in individuals or corporations who are going to buy it to straight cash. And that, of course, is from Blackstone. So mortgages are not coming in because they don't need mortgages. They're paying for housing. They're paying for the house. And of course, they're renting it out to everybody. You will own nothing and be happy. And this was a quick article just in half a trillion dollars in unrealized losses hits U.S. banking system as FDIC warns. 63 banks on the brinks of insolvency in the states right here. Half a trillion dollars in paper losses, primarily due to the exposure to the residential real estate market. This is starting to sound a lot like 2008. Uh, but don't worry, banks can hold on to these securities until they mature without marking them to making them to market on their balance sheets. These unrealized losses can turn into a major liability when banks need cash and they're gonna need cash at some point. So that's what's going on. So look, I know it seems bad and uh, on certain fronts it is, but look towards the positives. I think there is a way out of this whole nonsense and it's called Bitcoin, crypto and digital assets. And lastly, before we go into the q and I'm gonna cover a couple other stories later on our second stream because it's way too much. One of those is that uh, Singularity and Ocean Protocol and AGIX, they finally gave some information as far as their merger. That's gonna happen on uh, June 11th, ends June 13th, I'll get into that. Also, we're gonna talk about uh, just how many crazy ass meme coins are out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, half a million tokens were launched on Solana in May alone. And that's why, if you're asking, why are my altcoins going up? It's because everybody's gambling in meme coins. And lastly, I want to talk about World Mobile as they have a, a nice new partnership with uh, Quenta Sync as they move towards uh, DeFi and uh, banking the unbanked and also connecting the unconnected. So we'll talk about that in the second stream. That's what's happening. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. We got to take off, take off. Thanks so much, everybody. Adios.